enjoy the presence and the feeling and the power of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. You want to say something? You good? Oh, you waiting on me. All right. All right. Amen. All right. God is good. If you got your Bibles, you will. Turn with me over to John chapter 19. It's going to be in John chapter 19 and also in Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. We're going to be in John first, and then I'll move over to Matthew chapter 20. God's left some, uh, give me some other scripture we'll be reading, but I want you to look there with me uh, in the Word of God. Amen. Um, gonna going to give you what God's given me, and knowing Easter's coming up next week, but like Brother Charles had said earlier, there's a lot of things that's inspired before the resurrection. Amen. And uh, so I'm not going to be able to get them all, but I want to talk about this one thing that God's given me. Amen. Uh, today, over in John chapter 19, if you will, stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read verses number 28, 29, and 30, all right? The Bible said in verses number 28 of John chapter number 19, the Bible says, and after this, no, uh, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be full of field, says, I thirst. Verse number 29 says, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. It said, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon a hyssop and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Let's pray. Father, God, we love you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done, all you're going to do in this service. Through God, today we pray, Lord, if there's one here today, God, to, uh, Lord, that don't know you from the free pardon of sin, Lord, I pray something to be said or done today, God, that you'll reach down, God, and you'll just save them today. Draw them, dear God. Let the power and the Spirit of God draw them unto salvation. God, we just love you. Thank you today, God. I pray, God, for the child of God today, something to be done, uh, said or done, God, to be a help to them, uh, God, to encourage them in the word of God today. Lord, I know God, I can do nothing. I can say nothing, God, of myself, God, to do be any help to anybody, but God, through the mighty presence and the power of God, through the word of God, Lord, what an encouragement God will have in the word of God today. Now, help us now to preach this word you've laid on our heart. God, we thank you for all you've done, all you're going to do. Now, in Jesus, holy name, we pray, and everyone said, praise the Lord. Me and you may be seated, all right? I want to back up here just a little bit. Uh, I want to tell you uh, 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 where, I'm, where I'm going. The Bible says right here in verse number 28, what I'll preach on. The Bible says here, and after this, uh, remember Jesus now had been beaten and all this was went on, and he had done been up to the cross, gone up to the cross. He was hanging on the cross at this time. It's when he said this, and the Bible says, and after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Amen. And say it, I thirst. Now listen, how many knows that y'all know Jesus, uh, he was God. Amen. And, and he knows all things. He already knows everything. Amen. Uh, how many knows that when he said, I thirst, and he know they was going to offer him vinegar. I know they, he knows that. No doubt about that. Amen. But I'm going to uh, back up just a minute. Now the vinegar, I can preach on the vinegar and what they offered him on the hyssops, a whole different, uh, the entire different message. But I want to preach this morning on the part where he said, I thirst. Amen. Uh, but I ain't, I, I'm going to fill, fill in on to that. As he says, I thirst there, uh, he also goes back over. I'm going to take you back over to the Scripture for a minute. To where when Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane, y'all remember that. And Jesus went out there. Remember, he took Peter, James, and John. They went a little further in the garden. And the Bible said that uh, he told them to stay here while I go and, uh, yonder. Amen. And the Bible said he went on over over in the garden there and he nailed to pray and the Bible said he done that and he come back and they was asleep and he went back and prayed he come back for well, the third time he come back the Bible said that he uh, as he was praying there the Bible said blood as great drops of uh, sweat has great drops of blood had come out on him and he said something there he said Lord if it be thy will let this cup 
pass from me. Amen. Let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Uh, and so then he went back, and they was asleep. He said, sleep on, for my time has come. Amen. Uh, and so I want you to understand, then he gets here on the cross, and he said, I thirst. Amen. Uh, I want to go back just a minute about that cup. Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus was drinking of the cup. Now listen, I believe when he said, I thirst, uh, that was I signified to the Father uh, because he said here knowing that all the scripture had been fulfilled uh, and all things had been accomplished uh, that was uh, signifying to the Father saying I'm ready to drink it. Amen. Uh, I'm ready to drink the cup. Amen. Uh, now we go back many things and look at that uh, and understand I understand that there's a uh, meaning for the vinegar and meaning for all that but my friend I still believe it was a signifying because remember he asked the question back to the Father in one of the gospels, maybe this one and in one of the gospels, he said my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Amen. He was communicating back to heaven. Hallelujah uh, with God. So now he says I thirst. Amen. And so now he knows they weren't going to come and give him a glass of water and let him drink some water. They was torturing him. They was tormenting him. Amen. Uh, and so I, I, this is uh, the way that, is that I was studying this. Uh, another identification of him and God and said, I'm ready. Go ahead and let me drink all of it. Amen. I'm, now, I want to get to that part. Last Wednesday night, we had communion into that, and in the time that we have communion, as we pass the cup around, remember what Jesus said. I'm, he says, this is my blood of the New Testament. Amen. I'm, and he says, take it and drink all of it. Hallelujah. My friend, there's so many want to take part of it I'm, and want to do part of this and part of that, I'm, but you can't drink part of it. you got to have all of it. Amen. I, there was a reason God said to drink all of it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you can't have baptism and not have salvation. You can't have, you, you got to have, you got to have it all. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you now, listen to me. You say, what do you mean? I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who want a, a dose to do better, but they don't want the salvation part. They have to walk the walk, talk the talk. That's why he said, hey, this is my body. It's been broken for you. And he said, this is my blood that's been shed for you. Take all of it. Hallelujah. I took all of it. Anybody in the house, have you took all of it? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, take all of it. Amen. I take all of it. And so now... Uh, turn with me and Matthew back over here in just a minute. I want to show you, I want to preach this morning uh, on this very th uh, thought, uh, the traded cup, amen, uh, the traded cups. Now listen, I just told you to where he, uh, as Jesus was talking in the garden there, that he said, hey, uh, he said, Lord, I, I said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. He knew he was going to drink a cup, amen, uh, and my friend, it was a cup that me and you could not drink, amen, uh, and we're going to see that over in Matthew. Matthew chapter number, in chapter number 20, if you'll look over there with me just a minute, amen, I, I, I've got a long ways to go and a short time to get there, but I'm going to preach this I, the way God's given it to me, all right, I, and so now he's over here in the, in the mother of, of Zebedee's here, we're going to pick up in verse number 20, the Bible said, then came he uh, to him, uh, it says the, the mother of Zebedee's, the children uh, with her, uh, uh, with her sons, amen, I, worship him and uh, desiring a certain thing of him. Amen. Um, now, we know who the sons of Zebedee was, James and John. Y'all remember that? And so that's who he's talk they're talking about. And they get here and he says this in verse number 21. He said, and he said uh, unto her, he said, what, uh, what thou? And she saith unto him, grant that these two, uh, th that my two sons uh, may set the one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy kingdom. Amen. Um, and so now she's asked a question. And the Bible said, in verse number 22, the Bible said, and Jesus answered and said, ye know not what you asked. Amen. Um, but look what he said in this verse. Um, he said, ye are a I said, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Amen. I, he said, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? I, well, I got news to go on and tell you. No, they can't. Amen. I, me, I can't. You can't. If we had a Jesus, wouldn't have had to come. Amen. I, but I'm going to tell you what he said here. He goes on into this. I, and now the mother had asked them him this. I, and the Bible said, and gee, he answered, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? 
have um, and to be baptized with a baptism that I am baptized that I am baptized with. Um, and they said unto him, We are able. Amen. Who now? Now James and John spoke up and said, We are able. No, they're not able. Amen. Um, they was not able. And I want to pray, I want to talk to tell you about this. Um, uh, my friend, and the trading of the cups. Um, the cup that Jesus drunk um, is not the cup that we have to drink. Um, ain't you glad of that today? Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible said in verse number 23, look with me in this. This is where the trucks had been traded. Um, in verse number 23, the Bible said, um, and he said unto them, um, it said, you shall indeed drink of my cup. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad? I'm glad I'm drinking of Jesus' cup. Um, not the cup he had to drink. Um, because I'm going to preach in a minute. I want to tell you the difference of what was in the cup. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying to you? I want you to understand this morning. A church, my God's good to us. He took the worst and give us the best. Are you hearing me? He took the cup and he emptied it up. He drunk it on the cross. He drunk it on the way to the cross. I'll be honest to tell you, I believe he started drinking it from the wound. I'll just be honest. They tried to start killing him from the time he was born. But my friend, he was drinking this thing. But all the way to the cross, my friend, what went in that cup of his was suffering and the pain and the agony and all this thing and not only, but death was in that cup. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? In the cup that he drank, me and you could not drink it because the third day is we going to celebrate next week. He got up. But if me and you had drunk the cup, it would have been the end of it. We wouldn't have been no hope for us. But in that cup he was drinking, it come with suffering. It come with pain. It come with agony. It come with death. All that was poured in his cup. And he said, Lord, I'm thirsty. Hallelujah. Give it to me. I say, believe right then he was telling God, I thirst, give me the cup. And I believe he took it and he drunk all of it. Hallelujah. Because the very next thing, the words that come out of Jesus' mouth, he said, it is finished. Are you hearing me? Now listen to me, literally, I can, I can imagine, I, I think about I got a good imagination. He didn't really hold a cup up and drink it there, but the cup that he was having to drink was a cup God given him, and he was drinking that. But I can just see him turning that cup up. I'm talking about physically looking at something. Somebody wants to look at something. I'm telling you, on that cross, listen to me, in that cross all the time that they got him out of that garden, and I'm going to get somewhere in just a minute. Along the way, they done told him, we can drink that. They couldn't drink that. Matter of fact, you're going to see in a minute where they walked away from him. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But in his cup, my friend, he took that thing, and the Bible said they got him right at the garden and took him up and brought him before Pilate. And not only we think about the suffering, but there was humility in it. They humiliated him. I'm telling you, they spit up on him. They slapped him. They plucked his beard. Are you hearing what I'm telling you that went on on that cross? And before that cross, they tied him up to a post. This was in his cup. And in his cup, they sat there. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. Every time they'd hit him, the flesh would come open. The blood would run out. Hey, but the Bible said that he had nothing. He was a man. He went to slaughter, but he not opened his mouth. Hey, I'm telling you, the only time that he opened his mouth, he was talking to the Father. He said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, Lord, I thirst. I thirst, Lord. Then he said, it is finished. And the Bible said that he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. They didn't kill him. He laid it down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I didn't have to drink that bitter cup. Come on, y'all. 
I'm glad I didn't have to drink that bitter cup. But he looked over here at these disciples. These disciples said, hey, we can drink it. We are able. Jesus, no, they was talking of a foolish. They was talking foolishness because he knew they couldn't drink what he had to drink. In chapter 20, I'm telling you, he was on his way to the cross. And he was asked this question. He wanted them to be something up there in heaven. I got news to tell you. We all going to be something in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And Jesus even goes to tell her. He said, that ain't me to give that place. That's only comes from God. He's going to give it. But he said, I tell you what I am going to do. I am going to make a cup that y'all are able to drink. I'm going to give a cup to you. Hey, you might think you can drink mine, but you can't drink mine. But you can drink of the one that I'm going to give. Hallelujah. Now, you got to understand something. God give Jesus his cup. Jesus give us our cup. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Now, now you, you got to think about it. Well, why? It's your why. Because God is a holy, holy, holy God. God could have no dealings with sin whatsoever. God couldn't come down here upon this earth and walk through this earth and do all that. You say, well, he was God in the flesh. Yes, he was. But they had to come a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice for the sins of this old world. Amen. Matter of fact, listen to me. Before Jesus ever came, i will go back to Moses just a minute. I'm telling you, the Bible said that people could not, the Bible said no man has saw God and lived. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible said Moses asked the question. He said, Lord, he said, let me, let me just see you. Let me just see you, Lord. He said, Moses, you can't do it. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rocks. And that way, when I pass by you, you can just see the shadow of me coming by. My friend, that was the most you ever saw in the Bible of somebody that might have saw a shadow of God, didn't see God. Just a shadow of God. Amen. That's how holy God was. And so something had to come along and bring us to God. And it had to be a perfect lamb. It had to be the perfect blood. And Jesus said, Lord, I'll go. I'm telling you, listen, people says, well, Jesus had to be born to come. Jesus always was. I come to tell you, folks, you think that he was just born through Mary. I tell you, he was the son. He was was the man that walked in the fire with a fire for in the fire. Are you hearing me? He was the one. He was standing out there in the middle of the river, in Jordan River, when Elijah, Elisha had come through. He said, about with us. Hey, it was Jesus. It was out there with them. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I come to tell you, he was the ram that was caught in the thicket over there for Isaac. Are you what I'm saying, somebody, want to praise the Lord. What a God, hallelujah. What a God, praise the Lord. What a cup he drunk that we couldn't drink. Amen? What a cup. They sat here and they said, Lord, we can do it. He said, no, you can't. But I'm going to give you a cup. Let me finish reading that. Boy, this is some side of stuff for me. He said, and he said unto them, he said, "Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with." <laughs> It says to, but to set on the right hand and on the left hand, it's not of mine to give. <laughs> There's somebody a little bit tall, bigger than me. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Listen to me. If you always remember this, when Jesus was down here, not one time he pointed to him. He pointed to heaven. He said, I, "My Father has sent me." Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, my friend? What does the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God to do? It points back to the Calvary. It points back to Jesus, and Jesus points to Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It's what, listen, it's the, it's the power
power in the, in the Spirit and the Holy Ghost of God I'm, that draws us to Christ. And when we draw to Christ, the Christ just takes us on to God. Because, see, me and you can't get to God without Christ. Hey, we least it takes God as our mediator between man and God. Hey, this says, hey, I have a way. I've done made a way. I drunk the cup. I drunk all of it. I suffered for you. I took your iniquity. I bore your shame. I've done it all for you so we can get you to heaven. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said to us. Matter of fact, I wrote this verse down, and many of you know it. The Bible said that in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, he said he was wounded for our transgression. He said he was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? I'm telling you it's all because of him I'm headed to heaven. It's all because of him, you children of God, you're headed to heaven. It's all because of him this morning, you sinner, that you can and go to heaven. It's all him. It's because he emptied the cup. He said, I thirst. He hung on that cross. He said, Lord, I've reached my point. All of it's been fulfilled. Everything's been accomplished. Lord, I'm there. I'm thirsty. Give it to me. And he finished up the cup. He said, it's finished. Bowed his head and gave up the ghost and died for me and you. Died for me and you. Next week, we're going to see him where he probably, some way next week, we'll see where he rose again. But I just want to leave you hanging. He rose again. That's why I'm here today, because God loves us that much. Amen? Look here, I told you. They asked him, they said, yeah, we are able. Well, I'm going to give you some scripture. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 26, only, 20, only six chapters over. Now they... They sat there and they said, hey, they said, Lord, we can. And John done told them he can't, but I, I got you a cup, you can. In chapter in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 55, the Bible says, and at the same hour what Jesus said unto them, he said, now this is when they come out and took him, they, they come out to get him, amen, uh, out of that there at the garden where he done prayed. He said here, at the same hour when Jesus said unto the multitude, are you come out as against a thief with, uh, with swords and, and staves of, it said, for to take me, he said, I sat daily in thy, I sat daily with you and teaching you in thy temple. In other words, every day I was with you. I taught you. And then you come out after me with all this. He said, and you laid no hold on me. Never touched me. Look what he says in verse number 56. Verse number 56 says, and all this was done, that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then at the end of the verse, look what happened. It says, and all, and all the disciples forsook him and fled. Even the very ones that said, we can do it. We can do it. They fled. Listen, I'm not talking about them disciples. They've done a whole lot more than I'll ever do. But I want you to understand, Peter even sat there and said, Lord, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crow. He said, Lord, you know what? He was, in other words, he was pretty much saying, I ain't going to do it. But I'm telling you, he was walking along there. And I want you to know, because Jesus was headed to the crucifixion, he was going to him. Peter was standing in the midst of him. They went to call Peter out and say, hey, I think he was with him. He, I don't even know the man. Matter of fact, got down so bad that he went to use them words. It wasn't even good. Sin, because he didn't want to be identified with Christ. I'm just being honest. And my friend, about the third time he done that, the cock crew, Peter bowed his head, knowed he done messed up. I got news to tell you, we can't drink that cup. None of us could have drunk that cup, but I'm glad he left one behind we could. Amen. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about that cup a minute. I told you what was in his cup. And I didn't tell you all of it because I'm going to tell you something. There was things in that cup we, don't, we can't even comprehend. 
They were things in Jesus' cup that he drunk. We'll never know until we get to heaven all that he bore, went through. We, we have a, a, what they penned in the book and what we see, but my friend, I guarantee you there was more agony, more torture, more than we'll ever know. I'm telling you right now, I just want you to know there's a whole lot to that. Amen. And so but we can see a, a, a part of what was in his cup. But boy, I'm telling you, when he died and he, uh, he, he left us a cup when he died and he put some no things in it. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you because, see, I want you to understand, Jesus had to drink the cup of hatred because they hated him. He had to take all that, but thank God he replaced that with love. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit now. I'm telling you when he traded cups and what was in our cup, he took all the bad and he gave us all the good. My friend, not only did he take of the hatred, he put salvation in the cup. Are you understanding Understanding what I'm saying. I'm, he put salvation in it. I'm, and when we got salvation in our cup, I, he said, take it I'm, and drink all of it. I'm, and in that cup was salvation. I'm, in that cup was blessings. I'm, in that cup was joy. I'm, in that cup was love. I'm, in that cup was peace. I'm, in that cup I, I was justification. I'm, in that cup, I, I'm telling you, there's so much in that cup for me and you. I, I'm telling you, I can love. I, I can live. I, I can stand here in a free country. I, I can stand here worshiping Almighty God. I, because what he put in my cup. Hallelujah. That I'm able to drink this morning. I'm, I'm telling you right now what I want to ask you this morning. I, would you be like Jesus? I, he said be Christ-like. I, we don't got to drink that cup. I, but would you say this morning, I, I thirst. I, I thirst. I, I want to drink that cup that Jesus left. Are you hearing me this morning? Would you this morning? Would you say, I thirst? Would you? Because let me say this to you. This is sure as he fulfilled the scripture before he took and, and bowed his head and give up the ghost. He fulfilled everything. He took all of that cup and he drunk it. My friend, when he done all that, and those three days went by, <laughs> If he was down there, let me tell you this, out of mind, your cup, where he had, the Bible said, over, in, I think it's in uh, 1 Corinthians and maybe chapter 15, I ain't sure there, maybe, I can't remember what chapter, but he goes in there and talks about, uh, he said this, he said, uh, hey, oh death, where is thy sting? Uh, oh grave, where is thy victory? Uh, he took all that out of my cup. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Um, hey! said he took all that out of your cup. You say, well, preacher, we're going to have to die one day. I come to tell you this old body's going to have to lay down. But I want you to know, I, this old soul will never die. He took that out of my cup. And I got news to tell you, I can say what you want to. I know him. You may think, boy, how hard it's going to be to die. By the word of God, it can't be that bad. Because he took the sting of death out of it. Hey, I'm telling you, I, be, I want you to know, he put in that cup what he knew we could handle uh, and took everything out of it we couldn't handle and put it in his cup uh, and refilled another cup uh, for me and you uh, that we can walk in this life uh, and have salvation uh, have joy uh, have happiness uh, hey take the sting of death out uh, uh, take the power of the grave out uh, it has no victory uh, because I'm heaven bound uh, because Jesus took the cup are you glad? Are you glad? Boy, this cup's a whole lot better. It's a whole lot better. Listen to me. This cup that I'm drinking now is so easy to drink that people run from it because they don't realize how much love is in the cup. Listen to me. In this cup, Jesus wringed everything in him out. <laughs> Let it fall in that cup that we can drink him. Hear me? Oh, I'm telling you, when I was studying in this, and the other day I've been studying in the, uh, uh, over where we had communion Wednesday night, and it was so hard to separate these things. But I could have preached them both at the same time. But I'm I just trying to tell you, when, when, when Jesus took it, listen, the Bible said I didn't hold nothing back. He said I didn't withhold nothing I give you everything. Church, listen, Jesus left everything 
to give us everything. That's it here. And we can hit surface of this thing. Jesus even told the disciples and told them, he said, fox have holes, bird have nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And boy, he done that, and look what he's given us. Go back over and read over here in John chapter 14, where he said, over where he talks about, uh, about what God's given us. Remember what he said there. He said, believe, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. Amen? If it were not true, I would have told you. <laughs> and if I come uh, uh, to receive you to where I am, there you may be also. And I'm going to uh, miss a verse there. But in other words, what Jesus is saying to you, I left my home and come to where I didn't have a home, where I was rejected. And so I'd come give you peace, give you joy, give you hope. In your cup to know, my friend, that you have hope. Our hope lies in blessed Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I come to tell you, my friend, in this world, the Bible said, I told them yesterday up there, in this world, if we didn't have Jesus, if he had not got up, we'd be men of uh, most miserable. But thank God we have hope in Christ Jesus. I am knowing, listen to me, I'm not talking about, you ain't got to try to persuade me today. You ain't got to try to persuade me tomorrow. I come to tell you, I've already been persuaded. Do I got anybody in the house? I've already been persuaded because he took the bitter cup and give me the good cup. And I've been persuaded that he is Christ the Lord. And beside him, there are no other. He is the Messiah. He is the bright and morning star. He is who he is. He's the Prince of Peace. Are you here? What I'm saying to you, listen, what's in your cup? Hallelujah. Have you drunk that cup that Jesus has given? Listen, I'm asking you, if you're here lost, are you thirsty? Christians, aren't you say this morning, I'm thirsty? Would you say, I want to just keep drinking this thing? I mean, those is living a Christian life every day. I'm telling you, I'm putting on. Hey, listen, every the Bible tells us, brother, the Bible is all in that Sunday school class. I'm like, brother Charles, if you ain't got been coming, you ought to come. I'm telling you, it's awesome teaching. I'm telling you, I'll learn something. Uh, but listen to me, I'm in this cup, my friend, I'm telling you, in this, he said, if we are clean to the Spirit of God, he said, he would let us clean to him, and we wouldn't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm telling you, that's what's in our cup. That's what's in our cup. The Bible goes on in the Scripture. After they realized they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it because Jesus told them they couldn't. But I want you to notice in chapter number, John chapter 18, verse 11, back before Jesus got all to this point, Jesus had this. He had said this. Matter of fact, he was, he was telling them over here in the Scripture. Let me just read this. He said in, in John chapter 18, verse number 11, it said, Then saith Jesus unto Peter. But, hey, listen, now this is when this is when Jesus had come out there and they had come out to get him. As they were standing there, the soldiers come. Peter drew a sword and cut his ear off. And Jesus reached down and I learned this not too long ago and I forgot who told me. Somebody may be in here. I, I learned this. The reason they put the ear back on him and, and Jesus healed him to where there was no blood, there was no, because in that custom, if there had been evidence, Peter had been charged for it. But God took away the charge when he replaced it and it looked whole. Listen, Jesus took charge from me and you. He took all the evidence away that we was a sinner. Come on, y'all. I know we don't feel that way, but he took all the evidence that when God looks at us, he looks at Jesus, and there's no evidence. We are justified just as though we have never sinned. Through Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, see, that's in our cup that we're drinking. Are you with me? I want you to understand that. But here G, he was. He come out, and he took that, and he, and he uh, took that sword, and he cut his ear off, and, and Jesus picked it up and put it back on him. He said, put that sword away. Amen. And then he looked at him. He said, in this verse, he goes on. He said, the, uh, it says here, the cup which the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? That's what he asked him. In other words, he said, I'm going to drink it for your sake. For your sake, I'm going to drink it. The Bible said in John chapter number 7, verse 37, the Bible said in the last day, listen, 
It said, in the last day, the great day of, uh, in, in the great, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. See, we can drink of that cup. We can drink of that cup. And Jesus makes a step further, and everybody remembers this when he goes by Jacob's will. I preached on it not long ago. See, Jesus was very concerned about people's soul. That was the main, the main mission of Jesus coming to save souls. He healed along the way while he was doing it, but his main focus was come to save the world. That's what he come for. He goes down there and he gets on OJ, he gets on Jacob's well. But anyway, as he gets there in chapter John chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible said he asked the question this. He said, Jesus answered and said unto her, talking about the woman, if thou knowest the gift of God, if thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that, that saith to thee, give me drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would give her, give, and, and he uh, would have given thee living waters. Are you happy? I'm telling you, that's what God does for us. That's what God does. Hey, the Bible said in, uh, over in 26, I'm going to read this in Matthew chapter 26, verse 27, and he took the cup. This is what I, I, I told you the other day. We, we, this is a scripture that I used last Wednesday night, and I can tell you it's hard to keep all this separated uh, because I knew where God had me today. But he says in chapter, 20, in chapter 26, verse 27, and Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and, and gave it to them and saying, drink ye all of it, all of it. And then the Bible said in verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed, are you hearing me? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm glad Jesus made a cup. I'm glad this morning, church, that he swapped cups. <laughs> because, see, without Jesus coming, that was a cup that me and you would have had to drink. We wouldn't have been, we wouldn't worry that we couldn't do it. But Jesus said, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to drink that cup, but I'll leave them another one. Hey, I'm glad he traded cups. I'm glad when he traded cups, I'm glad what was in my cup. I'm glad what's in the cup that we have today. My friend, I'm asking you this morning. I'm asking you. See, Jesus made it. <clears throat> Jesus made it real simple and real easy. And you say it's easy because of what he done. The part that we have to do is believe in our heart. Listen, the Bible says, believe in our, confess with our mouth, believe in thy heart. Thou shalt be saved. How is that, preacher? Just by the Spirit of God drawing. When that Spirit draws you, <laughs> I, I, I picture this, and I know Jesus is not actually physically right here, but I feel him. <laughs> but I, I, I believe Jesus is standing this morning for some lost soul. He says, would you drink this cup? And he looks at it, and he says, it, it, it ain't nothing like the cup I drunk. I took all the grief, I took all the pain, I took all the beating, I took all the suffering, I took all the humiliation, I took, and he's took all, uh, out there where he hung on that cross and they whipped him, he said, I took all that. All you got to do is take this cup of belief. What's that mean? He said, you got to believe that I did all that. You hear me? He said, you got to believe that I did all that. You got to believe that I, that I.